Hello everybody. I thought I was on my own at St. Peter's today. It's great to see you. I can't believe it's time for another writing challenge already. I'm going to have a think about what story I could tell that will inspire you to do some really creative writing. A big well done to those of you who've been responding to my writing challenges so far and getting virtual head teacher awards for your efforts. Right, I'm going to go and have a think about the story I could tell you this week. Well, now that I know you're here, I've got changed. Please don't tell your grown-ups about the outfit you saw me wearing. I'd really appreciate it if you could keep it between just us. Thanks. Now, as I was getting changed, I had a thought of a really good story you would like and that we could do some brilliant writing about. It's called The Day the Crayons Quit. And it's actually one of my favourites. One day in class, Duncan went to take out his crayons and he found a stack of letters with his name on them. Hey Duncan, it's me, Red Crayon. We need to talk. You make me work harder than any of your other crayons. All year long I wear myself out colouring fire engines, apples, strawberries and everything else that's red. I even work on holidays. I have to colour all the Santas at Christmas and all the hearts on Valentine's Day. I need a rest! Your overworked friend, Red Crayon. Gosh, he's not happy, is he? Dear Duncan, all right, listen. I love that I'm your favourite crayon for grapes, dragons and wizard's hats, but it makes me crazy that so much of my gorgeous colour goes outside the lines. If you don't start colouring inside the lines soon, I'm going to completely lose it. You're very neat, friend. Purple crayon. Dear Duncan, I'm tired of being called light brown or dark tan. Because I am neither. I am beige and I am proud. I'm also tired of being second place to Mr. Brown Crayon. It's not fair that Brown gets all the bears, ponies and puppies, while the only things I get are turkey dinners if I'm lucky and wheat. And let's be honest, when was the last time you saw a kid excited about colouring wheat? Your beige friend, beige crayon. Duncan, grey crayon here. You're killing me! I know you love elephants and I know that elephants are grey. But that's a lot of space to colour in all by myself. And don't even get me started on your rhinos, hippos and humpback whales. You know how tired I am after handling one of those things, such big animals. Baby penguins are grey, you know. So are very tiny rocks, pebbles. How about one of those once in a while, to give me a break? You're very tired, friend grey crayon. Dear Duncan, you colour with me, but why? Most of the time I'm the same colour as the page you are using me on, white. If I didn't have a black outline, you wouldn't even know I was there. I'm not even in the rainbow. I'm only used to colour snow or to fill in empty space between other things and it leaves me feeling well, empty. We need to talk. Your empty friend, white crayon. Hi Duncan, I hate to be used to draw the outline of things, things that are coloured in by other colours, all of which think they're brighter than me. It's not 
fair when you use me to draw a nice beach ball and then fill in the colours of the beach ball with all the other crayons. How about a black beach ball sometime? Is that too much to ask? Your friend Black Crayon. Gosh, all these crayons are so unhappy. Dear Duncan, as Green Crayon, I'm writing for two reasons. One is to say that I like my work, loads of crocodiles, trees, dinosaurs and frogs. I have no problems and I wish to congratulate you on a very successful colouring things green career so far. The second reason I write is for my friends, <laughs> yellow crayon and orange crayon, who are no longer speaking to each other. Both crayons feel they should be the colour of the sun. Please settle this soon because they're driving the rest of us crazy. Your happy friend, Green Crayon. Dear Duncan, Yellow Crayon here. I need you to tell Orange Crayon that I am the colour of the sun. I would tell him but we are no longer speaking. And I can prove I'm the colour of the sun too. Last Tuesday you used me to colour in the sun in your Happy Farm colouring book. In case you've forgotten it's on page 7. You can't miss me, I'm shining down brilliantly on a field of yellow corn. Your pal and the true colour of the sun. Yellow crayon. Dear Duncan, I see Yellow Crown already talked to you, the big whiner. Anyway, could you please tell Mr Tattletail that he is not the colour of the sun? I would, but we're no longer speaking. We both know I am clearly the colour of the sun because on Thursday you used me to colour the sun on both the Monkey Island and the Meet the Zookeeper pages in your Day at the Zoo colouring book. Orange, you glad I'm here? Your pal and the real colour of the sun. Orange crayon. Dear Duncan, it has been great being your favourite colour this past year and the year before. And the year before that, I have really enjoyed all those oceans, lakes, rivers, raindrops, rain clouds and clear skies. But the bad news is that I am so short and stubby I can't even see over the railing in the crayon box anymore. Your very stubby friend, Blue Crayon. Duncan, okay, listen here, kid. You have not used me once in the past year. It's because you think I'm a girl's colour, isn't it? Speaking of which, Please tell your little sister I said thank you for using me to colour in her pretty princess colouring book. I think she did a fabulous job of staying inside the lines. Now back to us. Could you please use me sometime to colour the occasional pink dinosaur or monster or cowboy? Goodness knows they could use a splash of colour. Your unused friend, Pink Crayon. Hey Duncan! It's me, Peach Crayon. Why did you peel off my paper wrapping? Now I'm naked. I'm too embarrassed to leave the crayon box. I don't even have any underwear. How would you like to go to school naked? I need some clothes. Help, your naked friend, Peach Crayon. <sighs> wow, poor Duncan just wanted to colour. And of course, he wanted his crayons to be happy. And that gave him a good idea. When Duncan showed his teacher his new picture, she gave him a good work sticker for colouring and a gold star for creativity. Hi Reception, I hope you really enjoyed that silly story. Can you remember what crayons we met? It was definitely red crayon. I remember peach crayon. Try and have a think about the other ones. 
And what I want you to do is something special. I want you to colour a part of a piece of paper in each of those colours or as many as you have. I'd like you to try and write the colours, forming your letters neatly. Mummy and Daddy might help you sound those words out or they might write them down for you to copy. But have a go at holding your pencil correctly and writing out those names. Then, if you feel like a creative challenge, I want you to go out on a nature hunt and I want you to find a little gift that you're allowed to take for each of those colours. Stick them on top and that will cheer some of those grumpy crayons up. I'll show you a picture of my daughter's colour hunt now. Good luck! Okay, year one and two. I want you to choose your favourite crayon from the story I just told you. I want you to listen to the letter they wrote again. And then I want you to imagine that you're Duncan. And I want you to write a letter back to that crayon. Maybe you're sorry to them. Maybe you're going to try and use them more. Have a think about what they say and make sure your letter responds back. I want to have sentences which make sense. I want to see your neatest handwriting. And I want you to try and use punctuation like full stops, capital letters, maybe even an exclamation mark or a question mark really, really well. When you've done your writing, read it back again and check it makes sense. Hi Year 3 and 4. I'm going to really challenge you to think creatively and have some fun. I want you to look around your house and I want you to spot some other objects, a bit like crayons, that might want to quit too. Maybe they're underused, overused, not appreciated. Here's some thoughts that I came up with. Cutlery. Favourite mugs. And not so favourite mugs. The doorbell always being pushed and shoved. The remote controls that no one ever uses. What is that even for? Whatever you decide, Year 3 and 4, I want to read the letters from those objects, telling me how they feel and why they feel that way. Maybe you could tell a story with more than one letter. It's up to you. But have a think about all those fantastic writing features that we expect from you in school. Proofread your writing, please, to check it makes sense. Good luck! Of course I'm a qualified teacher.